Hello, I'm here with Summer Ash, the Director of Outreach at Columbia University. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks for having me. So what is your position as Director of Outreach? Um, so it means that actually I run a bunch of programs that sort of help bring astronomy and bring the research that happens in our department, but also the field in general, to the public and help explain new findings and also try and get kids excited about science in general. Were you excited about space and astronomy as a kid? I was. I think, uh, I don't know when it started, but I always liked looking up the night sky, and uh, especially the moon, but just always looking up whenever the skies were clear. Okay. And either as a kid or even today, what fascinates you the most about space? There's so much, but I think it's the fact that we are tied to the Earth. I mean, we can go into space and orbit the Earth, but we can't go out and go to Mars. We can't go to the Sun. We can't go to the nearby galaxies. But we can figure out how to just take pictures of them um, and collect light from them and figure out all the physical processes that are happening in them by proxy. Yeah, and we're, we are tied to Earth, but if you could go somewhere other in the universe, somewhere else in the universe other than Earth, where would you go for to either look for the best stuff or to just experience it? Where would you go? I would want to go into orbit around Jupiter because I've always that's always been my favorite planet. And the cloud layers and the big giant red spot, which is a storm that's three times the size of Earth, are just amazing to watch. And I kind of want to see that up close, as close as possible. And you mentioned three times as large as Earth, but some things in space are very hard to get a scale of. Do you have any insight as to just how big space is? Um, well, actually, the easy answer is that it's infinite which doesn't really help with the conceiving yeah. of it being infinite. Um, no, it's a tricky concept, and I feel like that's something that uh, you kind of develop as you do more and more science, because you become more familiar with orders of magnitude, which is just by saying, you know, a biologist ends up looking through the microscope and seeing things that are fractions and fractions of cells and atoms and things like that, and then we're going the opposite direction but you kind of develop a sense for it as the more you study science and you get to know what's 10 times bigger, what's 100 times bigger, what's 1,000 times bigger. It doesn't mean I know what a million times bigger than the sun actually feels like. I can just use it for a comparison. And you're an astrophysicist, correct? Correct. So have you dealt with the very, very small and does it affect the very, very large going from, say, atoms to the universe? Uh, it absolutely does because everything is made of atoms. And then everything is actually made of quarks, which are the subcomponents of atoms. And we have no idea if those are made up of strings or not. But the very small does affect the very big. And so in the process of studying astrophysics, you do have to study physics and atoms and those kind of things to better understand how they're interacting and then how they're interacting on larger scales and every scale in between. Thank you for the interview. You're welcome. It's great to meet you.